Uh, welcome everyone. Um, this uh, I'm I'm Dakshita Khurana. I'm going to be chairing this session. Um, the first talk is going to be about multipartite to tripartite reductions for LEU and SLOCC equivalences. Uh, this work is by Zili Chen, Joshua Gracho, Yuming Chao, Gang Tang, and Chuanqi Zhang. And Zili will give the talk. Okay, so, uh, so first let's have a quick look at the AOCC, definition for AOCC. So here is an example for two partite AOCC. In the beginning, Edison Bob share a entanglement and uh, they can have like multiple rounds of low cooperation and the classical communication. In the end, they will get a new entanglement state, which is uh, Psi, and uh, we say that Phi is ROCC convertible to Psi. So if we have this protocol. And so ROCC is a phys phys physically uh, realizable um, protocol, but here this ROCC is, is more like a mathematical definition to use to classify quantum entanglement. So here the everything is the same except the for the for the last step the pure state became a mixed state. And as long as this mixed state contains the state Psi, we say that phi is SLCC convertible to Psi. And the notice that if we, uh, if we, can, if we have a SLCC protocol transfer phi to Psi, there, there is no guarantee that we have a SLCC protocol transfer Psi back to phi. So, here we have our definition for LCC equivalence. If if two states are LCC equivalent, that these two states are interconvertible through the LCC protocol. Similarly, we can have this uh, definition for SLCC equivalence. And uh, and also we all also have other equivalences for the for the for the uh, quantum state. So here, if we consider two departite pure states, and uh, we say that they are LU equivalents, as long as we can find two D unitary matrices act on, uh, act on Psi locally, it will send the Psi to phi, and then we say that they are LU equivalents. And here is an example for LU equivalence. So here you can see that if we apply the X gate on the second bit of the GHZ, we can get the second, second uh, second state. And uh, now if we relax the unitary matrices to general linear matrices, we can have a very similar uh, definition, which is called the LI equivalences. And uh, so here is an example where these two states are not LI equivalences, are not LI equivalent, because the tensor rank for GHZ state is two, and the tensor rank for W state is three. And the, by the invertible matrix, you cannot change the tensor rank of a state. And the, so first we have a theorem which is proved by dual without the rank in 2020, in, 20, in 2000. So they prove that SLCC equivalent, equivalence is equivalent to LI equivalent. Equivalence, and uh, then there is a result um, proved by Bennett, Papasco, Rolling, Smoling, and uh, Thapalia. They stated that if two states are LCC equivalent, then these two states are also LU equivalent. And so, so uh, well, it's it's well known that bipartite entanglement are. Uh, completely uh, classified. So uh, under under LCC equivalence and uh, or SLC SLCC equivalence. So for the LCC equivalence, it's characterized by the Smith coefficients because LCC is equivalent to LU equivalent uh, equivalence. And uh, by applying unitary unitary matrices on on a matrix, you will not change the single value of a matrix. And uh, SLCC is characterized by the Smith ranks. It's because 
uh, by applying inverter matrix, you will not change the 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 rank of a of a matrix of a matrix. But but it's proved by Wurtstrap, Dehani, Moore, Moore, and uh, Virtual D that four four qubit states all already have infinite many SLCC equivalences equivalence class, and uh, right now there is no complete characterization characterization for a uh, multipartite LCC equivalence or SLCC equivalence are known, and uh, it's the uh, in the um, in a survey written by Walter Gross and I said this they 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 guess that a canonical the theory of multipartite entang entanglement may not exist, and so right now today our work is regarding whether determining two uh, multipartite entanglement is hard or not. So first, there was a result proved by Zhenji, Li, and Chao. So they can reduce a multipartite entanglement to a um, to a tuple to two tuples of um, two tuples to the isom uh, to the equivalence of two tuples of um, tri tripartite or bipartite state. And uh, so our result actually uh, reduce the multipartite in uh, equivalence problem to the tripartite uh, tripartite equivalence problem so here the the first result is proved by Groch and Chow. they prove that um, determine two multipartite equivalence under LI equivalent under under LI can be reduced to tripartite equivalence under LI and uh, our results show that it's also hold for the local unitary equivalence. And uh, so this is a reduction for our, uh, this is a reduction we use to prove this. So first we, re uh, we reduce the uh, deep multipartite LU equivalence to an algebra isomorphism over a unitary group. And then we reduce this algebra isomorphism to tripartite LU equivalence. So here, let's, let me introduce the definition of algebra. So algebra contains, first it contains a vector space, and then it contains, and then it includes a bilinear map. So here you can think about this vector state as the, the set of all the elements in this, vac, vac, uh, in this algebra. And uh, this bilinear map is, will map adding two pairs of, adding two pairs of elements in this algebra to another elements in this algebra. So actually for any algebra, you can encode this with a three tensor. So here is, here is, this three, here is the three tensor. And uh, uh, you can think about divide this into, into a bunch of frontal slices. And uh, which is AI up to AN. And uh, then this bilinear map can can be actually uh, represented by this map, this mapping. So for any pair of vector u and v, it will map to a vector where each entry is the uh, product of u transpose a i and uh, v. And uh, so now, uh, so now we can have our definition for algebra isomorphism since. An algebra can be encoded by a three tensor. So we say that this two algebra is, are isomorphism. If there exists, oh sorry, it should be P. There exists a matrix, general linear matrix P, such that it will act on this. It will um, apply on the tensor A, send it to B. And if you visualize it, it will be like that. So here is our tensor A. And uh, you act P and P, 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 and P inverse on three direction of this, ten this tensor. It will send, send it to the tensor B. Yeah, and uh, so here we denote the equation one by this notation. So if we, uh, so we, we call it as A and B are, gen uh, are algebra isomorphic 
under general linear group. And uh, so based on this, this notation, we can have our algebra isomorphism based on the tensor, uh, of the tensor version. So first is the general linear group, uh, uh, the algebra isomorphism over general linear group. And uh, since we want to study the algebra isomorphism under unitary group, so here is our second definition for the for the where the A and B are an algebra over unitary group, because in the in the like it's, uh, we want to reduce LU equivalence to the algebra isomorphism over unitary group. And uh, so here is the instance of the algebra we will use to prove it. It's called the path algebra for quiver. So path algebra for quiver is um, is an algebra spanned by all the paths in the quiver. And the quiver is just a simple um, um, multigraph. So here is an example for the quiver. So you can see this, this is a quiver. And uh, so first it contains a, a vertex set, V1 up to V5. And uh, for each edge, we represent, represent it by X under two indices. So the first indices indicate that which interval this edge is at. And the second index indicate uh, the order of this edge in, in, in the corresponding interval. And uh, the paths are generated from vertices and edges in, in the quiver by some relations, like, like those relations. I will give, that, give you an example for the, for the fourth relation. So the fourth relation is actually the relation between edges and edges. So here you can see that if we want to concatenate x22 x31 together, we can get a, path, a length two paths follow for this rule. And uh, but if we want to concatenate x22 and x41 together, we will get a zero since they are not adjacent. And so here. Or if we formalize the path algebra in the definition of the algebra, so first it will contain the a vector space which is spanned by the all the path in this quiver, and then the bilinear map will will be all the concatenation relations. And uh, now we can actually associate any vector space. And in tensor product, product of vector spaces with the, with the following tensor. So here each interval interval will reference a, a support supporting vector space. And there are D intervals. And uh, we, uh, so here you can see the number of paths, which is the dimension of the this path algebra is bounded by this number. And uh, we call the path algebra for this query as path Q. And now we can have a observation that for all the tensor, for all the quantum state in this vector space, we can always map it to a path, length d path in the in this quiver by, by applying the same um, probability amplitude. And uh, so after we have our our path um, phi hat, we can use it to obtain the quotient path by phi hand. And then we denote the uh, three tensor encoding, encodes this um, quotient algebra as A sub phi. And uh, we prove that if, uh, if we uh, the determine two multipartite, um, two multipartite state, uh, the LU equivalence for, for two multipartite state can be reduced to determine um, to, to de determine the algebra isomorphism over unitary group. And so right now it's the second step of our proof. Now we want to prove the algebra isomorphism to the um, tripartite tripartite uh, LU, LU equivalence. So if you Let's uh, recall the definition for the LU equivalence. So it's like that. And uh, you can actually think of this as, you can actually think, actually think, of, think of phi and percent as two, three tensors. 
And this U1, U2, and U3 will act on the three direction of this three tensor. It will send the uh, phi to psi. And uh, so because you because so this is actually a three tensor isomorphism over unitary group. So we will have this notation that A and U are unitary unitary isomorphism for A and a, U, a and B in the U tensor weight tensor W. If as long as I can find three unitary matrices satisfy this equation. And so our reduction is inspired by the reduction for tensor system isomorphism to three tensor isomorphism proved by Fraterni, Grotio, and uh, Fraterni, Grotio, and Sagatruk. And because uh, the the tensor system is just a top of top of tensor, where uh, the supporting vector space of different tensor may share the we may be the same vector space or to any or or there there might be some tensor that is is a uh, supporting vector space may be the same and so here we use their technical to prove that and uh, determine two uh, determine two um three tensor are unitary isomorphism for A and B in U tensor, W tensor, W tensor, W star can be reduced to two, tens, two three tensor are unitary isomorphic for A and B in U tensor, V tensor, W. And uh, finally, our result, uh, like combining these two steps together, we can have, have our result reduce tripartite L equivalence to multipartite LU, LU equivalence. And here the dimension below below up is just polynomial bounded by the the dimension of the previous previous departed quantum state. And uh, so, as you can see, that our result is on, only work for the for pure state. So we may wonder we might wonder if there is a same result which can reduce the multipartite equivalence to tripartite equivalence for the mixed state. Thank you. Thanks for the great talk. Uh, any questions? Thanks for your very interesting talk. I was just wondering like, can you give some intuition how one can see from converting from D like D part uh, N part type to three, is there some sort of non-trivial mapping? Because I mean, it's you, you, you're bunching stuff in a non-trivial way or. Yeah. So first it's because uh, for any web space we can represent is it with a passive algebra, right? And uh, now it's just a passive algebra. It didn't encode anything, any information for the quantum state. And now if we, so here, this phi hand will encode some information for the state phi, right? And then if we apply the quotient, if we apply the quotient path Q divided by uh, phi hat, now this path quotient algebra will encode some information for the, for this quantum state. Quantum state. And now we actually prove, prove that like the, uh, uh, yeah, there there is a reduction that reduces the two like two multipartite uh, state LU equivalent can be reduced to the to the iso isomorphism problem of this two quotient algebra. And since you can uh, think of quotient al algebra as a special type of three tensor, so now we reduce this problem from three dimension three rank uh, D rank to three rank. Yeah. Um, okay, thanks. Um, another question. So like for case separability or GME, that type of like different class of what? like genuine multipartite entangled state, this kind of states, like this, is it easy to see how you would translate into like relationship in the three partite case? Uh, yeah, I don't think it's, it, it will, um... 
I think you can compute it, but it will be very tedious. Like you need to do a lot of calculation. Okay, so yeah, no but theory. the dimension blob is just polynomial blow up. Okay, yeah, thanks. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, let's thank the speaker again. Thank you.